Hi, I'm Aga from Poland. Hi, my name is Marian and I'm a pirate from Croatia. We're the craziest ones. Arr! Hi, I'm Nina from Germany. Hey, I'm Sal and I'm from Vancouver. Hi, my name is Marek from Warsaw. Hi there, I'm Remko Janssen. I'm from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Arr! Learning from different startup ecosystems is, like I said, not about competition, but it's about getting to know what the strengths and weaknesses of the startup ecosystems are and how we can learn from each other. So today we're going to have pirates from all over Europe on this stage talking about talent and migration. So basically we have our own homegrown talent. Talent is an issue because we also have Google, Intel, uh, Microsoft, um, Apple, uh, Sears. There's a lot of American corporate companies coming over, setting up R&D centers in Israel. So then you've got the talent fight between the startups and the corporations, and there's a, there's, there's a war for talent. Not quite to the extent that you have in Silicon Valley, but it's definitely there. Personally, I think it's very tough to recruit in France, but it has nothing to do with a talent problem. They have about 14 internationally recognized engineering schools. The problem comes from the fact that it's hard to hire in France because of strict labor laws. Um, but the cool thing is, because of the economic crisis, that's all loosening up. When you graduate from engineering school in England, there's a couple options to you. One of them is you go into banking, or you go into banking. Um, so there's a, small, there's a small company in London called Silicon Milk Roundabout, which is trying to sort of attack it at the basis by going to schools and saying, look at all these amazing companies. These guys are building music video apps. These guys are building financial tech stuff. These guys are building healthcare apps. You have other options for your talents. So it is hard, especially since the city can set salaries so high. Do we have talent in Barcelona? And I think the answer is yes, but a lot of their, them move there for the same reason, because they rather want to enjoy life and not necessarily work on a startup. So there are a lot of interesting people um, come there for a year or two, maybe four years, and then also leave at some point. The big advantage about Barcelona is that there is local talent, and at other companies they get paid really, really bad. So since startups don't have a lot of money, they, they can pay them the same, what they already get paid at other companies, but offer them a really, really interesting, exciting job. So, attracting world-class uh, world talent, okay, this is definitely a challenge. You've seen the news, it's definitely not easy to bring people to work in Greece. But I can tell you this, uh, we have a lot of Greeks that, are, that have worked in very high positions in technical management, in startups, uh, in prestigious places around the world. If I want to hire a technical person for my startup for, with 10 years of experience as a software engineer, I pay him 2,000 euros cost to the company, including his insurance and stuff like that. It doesn't make sense to struggle between each other. I mean, Europe is obviously stronger if it works together. I think that the ecosystem in Europe, they need to start doing a lot of things together where they share learning. I know that in Israel, you have an ecosystem there of sharing and giving, and you guys need to build that here so that you can get you can cross-pollinate your information so that everybody can have a lot more and you get better work. Europe will never be able to come up with a certain point of like Silicon Valley. It will be always uh, diver it's always about diversity. So from my point of view, the best strategy for Europe would be to keep this uh, diversity while building a very strong connection between um, communities. Are you